sciatica, also known as sciatic pain, is extremely disabling. It can have two origins. One is your discs, so that's a disc hernia or a bulging disc. And the other one is the piriformis muscle, which is a deep buttock muscle that can compress the nerve. In this video, I want to show you the pros and the cons of the traditional piriformis stretch versus an alternative piriformis stretch. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, ergonomist, posture therapist, author of the posture manual and creator of three online posture programs. Before we dive into the analysis of the stretch, I just would like to quickly recap where does piriformis pain come from? I always say piriformis pain is pain in people who stand for too long in a two bad way or who sit for too long in a two bad way. The job of your piriformis here on the right side is to rotate your foot outwards. So see if I stand for too long, well, I will typically do this, yeah? And if you put your hand kind of deep into your buttock and you go like this, you feel that immediately it contracts. So this is why I say, well, piriformis pain is pain for people who stand for too long too bad. Now let's look at the origin of the pain that you feel when you sit for too long. When you sit, the first origin of piriformis pain is direct pressure. Well, that can be because typically you sit on a hard plastic chair for too long. You see, that will compress the muscle and the muscle which is compressed doesn't get blood flow. And when the muscle doesn't get blood flow, it gets tired and it contracts. This is also the reason why we find the same pain in people who went through yeah, too deep massage. Another source of piriformis pain when you um, when you sit is this you see as soon as your knees go to the side you contract the piriformis muscle and that goes together with slouching so you recognize here the typical posture of people who sit for too long in a too bad posture when pain is due to your habits the solution comes from fixing your habits this is causal treatment. But in the meantime, you do need some symptomatic treatment, i.e. dealing with the pain and the direct origin of the pain, because while well, this pain is messing up your life and is yeah, removing every energy that you would need to deal with the causes of the pain. So you see, I'm a big fan of causal treatment, but next to causal treatment, you do need some symptomatic treatment. Otherwise, yeah, you don't manage. The traditional stretch of the piriformis goes like this. I'm going to stretch left. See, I'm going to lie on the back, going to form a right angle with my knee, and I'm going to turn the leg inwards in such a way that the leg here is as perpendicular as I can to my body. And then I'm going to bring the left knee in direction of the opposite shoulder. And to help, I can use the other leg. So you see, this is the stretch, the traditional stretch of the piriformis. Now, people who are in severe pain don't manage to do this, you know, uh, because they don't manage to rotate the leg inwards and they don't manage to bring it back to them. So there are alternative stretches and an interesting one came from a student that I was uh, coaching a few weeks ago who happens to be a professional massage therapist. He showed me an alternative stretch which I didn't think of before and I'd like to discuss the pros and the cons of the two. To demonstrate his stretch, I need a seat. Well, this is my relaxing seat, but it could be any seat. And you see what he does is, if he wants to stretch the right side, well, he will put the right leg on the seat, the side of the foot is resting on the, um, on the seat, and he's going to lean forward like this. So you see, from the side, it looks like that. Now, from a biomechanical perspective, what can we say there? What we can say is that standing is always more difficult than lying down because when you lie down, you have more stability. More stability, i.e. less mobility. 
The stability argument is even more important if you observe that here I'm actually well just resting on one foot so I definitely need some support from the backrest so that I have kind of yeah, two points of contact with the ground. Then you see I was like this with the other leg. Here I flex forward with the flat back. Most people don't know how to do this. It would be perfectly okay also to go like this. But it would not be okay to go like this because here you mess up your neck. Now let's look at how much force we put into the stretch. In this stretch, well, the force comes from the hip joint, i.e. it is the weight of my upper body. In the lying down version, the strength comes from either my arm muscles or from my leg muscles. It is less, i.e. in this standing version, you put more force on the painful piriformis than on the lying down version. Now, there are also good things about this stretch. This is easier for most people to do than what I was showing lying down. But the big thing about this stretch is the strain that you have on your knee. You see your knee is completely bent to the side in a non-physiological direction. So therefore, my advice is, well, look, you can try both versions. I think that this has a lot of good things about it, but you need to adapt it. You need to adapt it in a way that, you see, you hold your knee and you prevent it from suffering from the um, effort due to your weight. So I'm really completely closed here, holding my knee and making sure that, yeah, the arm is taking the, the, the torsion in the knee. I can even use the backrest, you see, and hold my hand with the backrest to make sure that my knee doesn't suffer. However, it remains that, you see, my ankle is twisted. Even if I hold my knee, my ankle is twisted. So all in all, I would say that if you have either a weak knee or a weak ankle, this standing stretch isn't a great idea for you. But if you are young and you have no specific issue in either of these two joints, well, why not try, provided that you, one, be careful with your stability, yeah? So hold the chair, and stand firm on your feet. Two, that you don't go with your whole body weight through the stretch. Three, that you hold your knee. And four, that you beware the way you bend your back. Either you go with the fully flexed forward back or you go with the flat back if you know how to do that. But in no case, you have a line of sight which is not in the continuity of your spine. I hope you found this useful. If so, well, please register to the channel and share the knowledge. There are a lot of things in my videos which many people need to know and you can find even more in the posture manual and the online posture programs.